every moment of our lives we are surrounded by nature's deadliest killers. 800 million of them cover every square meter of the planet. Viruses. But in the future, a technology called DNA recoding might make us immune to every single one. We've only eradicated one virus before, smallpox, once our greatest killer. After Europeans introduced it to the Americas, it helped to wipe out 90% of the native population. It's estimated to have killed half a billion people in its last century of existence. The last case was diagnosed in 1977 in a Somalian health worker. It's the first and only human virus that we've eradicated through vaccination. The AIDS virus first appeared in the 80s, and in just 10 years had caused the life expectancy in many African countries to drop by more than a decade. In 1918, a new strain of flu wiped out 3 to 5% of the world's population. Influenza and the common cold are still the fifth highest global cause of death. DNA recoding promises a world without these pandemics. Just the idea that you could be resistant to all viruses, even viruses you've never even studied before, is mind-boggling. So I'm George Church, professor of genetics, and uh, part of a worldwide effort to uh, improve our ability to synthesize uh, DNA in living species. We've done the first recoding of uh, E. coli. It is resistant to 90% of the viral types that are known to affect it. Getting human uh, cells that are fully recoded and fully virus resistant, that's probably uh, at least three, maybe 10 years away. It's quite possible we would no longer need viral vaccines because you would be multivirus resistant. To understand how we could become immune to all viruses, we need to understand how they interact with cells. Cells are like enormous biological factories. Viruses break in and hijack the machinery to make new viruses. In just a few days, the number of viruses in a host body can explode to 100 trillion. This can happen because cells and viruses speak the same biological language, DNA. It's made up of 64 codons. A codon is like a word that tells the cell to assemble an amino acid, the building blocks of life. Because there are multiple words for each amino acid, we can remove a few from the cell's DNA without changing what it normally builds. But viruses still use those words. So now the cell no longer understands viral DNA, and so it can't build new viruses. And that's DNA recoding. A billion year war between cells and viruses ends because they can't communicate. So what's holding us back? The main limitation is gene editing technology. The current record achieved by George Church's lab is 20,000 edits, but making a cell fully virus-proof will require 20 times that. I try not to reassure people about fears like uh, of genetic engineering. Uh, I think it's good, it's healthy to have concerns and to have discussions. People may not be aware that your, that your DNA is and, and the DNA of all the plants and animals around you is changing all the time. We've got um, uh, radiation from within our, within our foods, so there's carbon-14 is present in all the foods. There's radiation from the sky, galactic cosmic radiation. Uh, there's radiation from uh, rocks, like uh, granite will produce radon. It's in a lot of people's houses. Uh, you'll get it when you fly in planes, and these will change your DNA Recoding the much simpler DNA of bacteria is already possible. Virus-proof bacteria will be incredibly valuable to the pharmaceutical industry, which use them to manufacture drugs and can incur massive losses from viral contamination. And this might just be the first step towards public acceptance. Some people that are opposed to it in food might be embrace it if it's in insulin. The idea that natural is better, that random is better than engineered seems like that's uh, something that should be examined very carefully. If this technology reaches its full potential, it could create serious ethical questions. Should children be recoded in the same way that we vaccinate them today? Would viruses be confined to poor people without access to this treatment? 
there may come a day when we have to ask, should humanity fundamentally change our DNA for a life without disease?